nuclear weapons. Then we moved to strengthen U.S. sanctions on Iran and to render support to Iranian human rights and pro-democracy advocates through the passage of the Iran Freedom Support Act of 2006. Yet again, the U.S. has yet to bring to bear the full force of U.S. punitive measures on the Iranian team. We have failed to act quickly and decisively before. This may be our last chance to apply pressure on Iran before it is too late. So while the motion to instruct we are considering calls on the conferees to conclude their work by May 28th, it is my hope, Mr. Speaker, that we will not wait that long. We must strike at the regime's vulnerabilities and do so quickly and effectively. As such, the motion to instruct conferees insists on the House passed version of H.R. 2194, the Iran Refined Petroleum Sanctions Act, also known as IRPSA. Chairman Berman and I, along with several other members of the Foreign Affairs Committee and the House as a whole, have introduced IRPSA to target one of the Iranian regime's key vulnerabilities, namely its dependence on imported petroleum products, especially gasoline. The House passed it overwhelmingly on December 15th by a vote of 412 to 12. The sanctions bill we enact must match the gravity of the growing threat. There are several provisions that the conference report must contain if this legislation is to have any significant impact. Because Iran's energy sector and its dependence on refined petroleum are the regime's Achilles heel, in the motion to instruct, we must insist on sections 3A and 3B, which strengthen sanctions regarding the development of Iran's petroleum resources and the export of refined petroleum products to Iran. We must not reward countries that allow their businesses and citizens to provide assistance to Iran's nuclear, missile, or advanced conventional weapons program to be rewarded with a peaceful nuclear cooperation agreement. Therefore, the House must insist on Section 3C, which prohibits such agreements being submitted to Congress or entering into force. We must, we must insist, Mr. Speaker, on those provisions because the executive branch has not once applied sanctions under the Iran Sanctions Act on investment in the Iranian energy sector. This problem originated more than a decade ago when former Secretary of State Albright exercised a sweeping waiver that turned that act into a paper tiger. And the State Department continues to ignore mandatory sanctions under that act on those who are assisting Iran's proliferation activities. We must also ensure that Section 3D removes ambiguities regarding the President's waiver authority and thereby will ensure the speedy implementation of sanctions. And we must insist on Section 3F, which expands the definition of petroleum resources and products and closes loopholes in the original Iran Sanctions Act that have been re reported repeatedly exploited by others. Because the Iranian threat will continue to grow, the House must insist also on Section 3H, which extends the Iranian Sanctions Act by five years. And because we must not let those who have already violated our laws off the hook, we must insist on Sections 4A1, 4A2, and 4B1. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support this motion and ask conferees to embrace it and commit to sending the strongest possible bill to the President's desk. The clock is ticking. The centrifuges in Iran are spinning. Our time has almost run out. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. General Lady reserves her time. The Chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker.